Welcome to another episode of 10K Hours. I'm honored to have makeup artist, two-time Academy Award nominee and BAFTA nominee, Arian Titan. Hi. Hey, <laughs> welcome. Now, <clears throat> I'm honored to have you here. We have a long friendship yes. that goes back to 2002 when we met each other at Stan Winston Studios. Correct, correct, yes. Um, the good old Stan Winston Studios. Yeah, it, it goes pretty back. And you were an intern. Yeah, I didn't want to be friends with you, but you kept on bugging me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, when I see talent, I'm drawn to it. That's really what it is. I mean, I, you're just an amazing talent. Oh, um, when I was there, you had just finished a bust of Stan. Right. Correct. And a little tidbit is we had Alec Gillis here and we released that a couple of weeks ago. You worked for Alec Gillis, too. I did. I interned uh, for Studio ADI and uh, I just arrived in the States. And uh, yeah, that was with Tom and Alec. Which <clears throat> our show is about. The Tom Woodruff Jr. That's, That's right. The It's the. I think the, Tom Woodruff. Le yeah, I think yeah. he legally changed it. I'm not oh, sure. OK. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, the podcast is about the journey that got to where you are. Mm. Um, seeing you at Stan's interning, um, just working crazy hours, um, putting in the time to understand that for you to be a great makeup artist, you had to put the time in. And you worked with the greats. Right. You know, go down the list of who you've worked for so far. Well, because of my immigration, I didn't work with too many people. But mm -hmm. uh, Stan Winston, Rick Baker, uh, and uh, a lot under Dick Smith, and not working under Dick Smith, but studied under Dick Smith. And uh, so, yeah, those were definitely the bigger. The bigger yeah, you, you can't ask for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the that's the, the list. If I well, I didn't plan mistaken, it that way. Yeah. It's just that coincidentally, that's how it happened. Um, you know, uh, first it was Dick Smith and then he introduced me to Stan. And then after Stan's unfortunate passing, um, I got to uh, got a chance to work with Rick Baker. Which wh and what did you work with on Rick? Uh, with Rick, with uh, Rick, we did the first Maleficent. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it was actually a lot of personal stuff um, because Rick was uh, almost retiring already. But it was a, a span of three years. OK, yeah. let me go down your IMDb, because once again, <laughs> it is it's pretty deep. I mean, we go back from special effects from Tremors 3 all the way up to John Carter, Thor. Then with makeup, we go to the Shaft, Time Machine, Terminator 3, Pan's Lamereth. You did you do the Pale Man? Yeah, you did the Pale Man, oh. which, you know, is so iconic. The uh, if anybody doesn't know what the Pale Man is, had no eyes. And they were in his palms. It kind of looks like me. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's your Tinder profile? Yeah, it's yeah. just a pale man? <laughs> so we go from that to Terminator Salvation, Alice in Wonderland, Iron Man 2, Thor, Cowboys and Aliens, The Twilight Saga, World War Z, Maleficent, Unbroken, Rings, Wonder, Welcome to Marwan, The Highwaymen, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, Come Away, All the Bright Places, Misbehavior, Ghostbusters Afterlife. And, and just I, and I saw some Hellboy Hellboy two in there. Yeah, that's yes. right. The Golden Arm. It's yeah. one of my favorites. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So you have put your time in, and you've worked on a lot of movies so far. Yeah, it's not like I I try to do as much as I can. It's just that th that's just how it happened. Uh, and I'm I'm I tend to now a little bit now that I can be a little bit a little bit selective. Mm -hmm. How did you get into this? Because I can tell that your accent. We, I know where you're from, but tell everybody where you're from. Um, I was born in the northern part of the Netherlands mm -hmm. called Friesland. And um, yeah, uh, I came to the States when I was 19. And uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a roller coaster. But. Did you always know that you wanted to get in makeup? Yes, from a very, very young age. Uh, being an 80s kid, obviously some of that stuff is very influential growing up. But also, I think it has to do with your upbringing, uh, who your parents are. And I was just, I was always a kid that dreamed away in class and I'm very dyslexic, um, <laughs> which we found out later. Um, but, uh, you know, emotionally, uh, some heavy stuff happened when I was a kid. So I think I was very attracted to uh, a way out. And that to me was um, my way out. It was, um, you know, uh, and to this day still, uh, there's nothing more that I love other than makeup and creatures. Oh, and, and it's evident. 
it's <laughs> evident through your work to see the detail that you've done, the work you've done, and the time you've put into it. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like being an intern at these shops with, you know, Stan Winston, you know, Alec Gillis? Uh, oh, I mean, I was jumping up and down, really. I mean, I was a, I'm a calm person. I'm a calm kid in that sense. Well, I was a calm kid. I'm older now. But uh, I appreciative of it all. And uh, I didn't mind if they asked me to sweep the floor, you know, because I did. I was just happy enough to be there and be surrounded by all these people uh, and all the all the props that you saw from the movies that you grew up with. Um, and then how great was that to get to work with those people? And uh, now the two of them are gone, um, you know, in hindsight, I was happy to have met them in my lifetime. You did. And in, in, when I met you at Stan's, it was the last couple of years of Stan's mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. So you were able to meet him and work with him. And, you know, he mentored you. And he did. He did. At first, I mean, obviously, I was a lot younger. So at first, I was just interning. But I think after time went by, he got word like, oh, this kid, like, he pretty much sleeps here. <laughs> you should you should take a look <laughs> at his stuff, you know. Um, um, so very, he, did, he didn't have to help me, you know. So I'm very grateful. And I don't forget um, what he did. And... Um, but yeah, uh, you, you brought on that you um, you mentioned that you would even just sweep the floors. And I think it's important to our group of artists that, you know, that listen. It's just an honor to be there. And you have to be appreciative when you get these opportunities. Right. Well, especially nowadays, too, because I get interns in my shop now. And yeah. it's amazing how different it is because they grew up with all the YouTube and the instant gratification and everything has to happen now. Like, uh, you know, I want to be nominated next week. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, it, 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 you have to be able to, and there's a respect level, but it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, be grateful and, and, and work hard. I mean, in the end, there's a lot of talented people, but you got to put the hours in. I, yeah. I don't know how to get that across. It's, it's difficult because I hired, I hire young artists. And, and sometimes we'll float people doing because of projects. We, we don't have anything, but we're more than happy enough to float. And there's certain things we ask them to do. And it is that, um, like, that's not what I want to do. And I don't know how to get that across and get that into them to realize you're there to sponge. You're there to learn. It's the energy of that facility that's going to take you to the next level. And as you said, Put the time in. Yeah, but I think it filters out naturally. I, I, you know, I back when I was at Stan's and interning, there was another intern, and you could just tell the difference. Now looking back as well, uh, so I think you know, is it really that different? May yeah, maybe because of all the internet and everything else, but maybe it wasn't that different. You know, um, I mean, when when I when I was going to school at Noman, you could definitely tell the difference. There was there was people that. You, you either you could tell the people that had to hand over cash or pay for their classes versus the ones that were getting, you know, grants and loans and, you know, help from their parents. You could you could I, I know it's a weird thing to say, but you could totally see that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, even when in terms of like, you know, who's doing homework and, and how they're doing it, you could just tell. And I think I think that the process of, of either learning at a shop or, you know, learning at a school. It's a lot of those things are designed to find the people that are actually passionate about it. It will, it will filter through it will, eventually. It will. Yes, yeah. um, you're either there for because you love it or you're you're there because you yeah, don't. And, and those guys don't last. They don't last. And I, I tell around. them it's and yeah. I, when I do a talk at a school or sometimes at a makeup school, you know, it's like if it's truly what you want to do, it shouldn't be a problem to put all the hours in mm -hmm. because that's what you love to do. We've yeah, and we've all put the hours in. I, I mean, my longest day I think has been thirty eight hours straight. Oof, that's rough. Right when there's a delivery, you're up, you're there, you put the time in, and you can't emphasize that enough. When it's something you love and the passion is there, you don't mind doing it, and it's this team environment. Well, Once you again. forget about time. Yeah, and you just do it because you're having fun. Yeah, on yeah. some level, you are yeah. having a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, there'll be stressful moments, of course, when you of get course. older and yeah. you get more serious. Well, you it. have a shop now, of course. Uh, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. With, um, with experience comes a little more pressure. The pressure is definitely there. I mean, I never went to any business school. Obviously, I was very low grades, uh, very dyslexic, as I mentioned earlier. But 
yeah, now that I have a company and I have people working and larger groups, I'm like, yeah, the pressure gets, it, you know, it's mm. suddenly you have to think about all these things and, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> so with but all tell, this. Tell me about it. You know, <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Yeah. About, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so understanding that and, you know, that just comes with the territory because mm. you're, you know, you've got your shop, you've grown. Um, what do you do to actually just lose yourself when, when you get into the work? Like, I, I know with all these pressures, but your passion is doing the makeup. So when you're on set, do you just forget about all that? And just focus. Oh, I'm obviously because often it's it's so personal with the actors. You have to be 110. percent But um, yeah, and I have good people at the shop that just I know things will be okay. Um, um, but that's I guess the difference between visual effects as well and practical on camera, in camera effects is that when a production hires me, they mm -hmm. kind of physically want me there. Yeah. Right. And I'm sure they have that with visual effects because you have a visual effects supervisor on set, but you can in the meantime do stuff. Off I, can't, I have yeah. a harder time doing that because when I'm on set for three months, nothing happens at the shop. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. Now, you just brought up uh, a really interesting point about the intimacy of applying makeup. Have you seen, because with digital and all that, it goes back and forth. You know, do we do makeup? Do we not do makeup? Mm -hmm. Have you seen, you, you know, what is your experience with actors of the intimacy that, that it kind of pushes them in that direction of helps them with a character? doing the practical. um right well i've uh, yeah half half i guess i mean any actor will tell you that they will love to you know uh interact with stuff uh, most actors i would think um most actors i've had in my chair uh, in the end no matter how sometimes grueling the process might be at 4 a.m in the morning um do kind of at the end say well I, you know i couldn't do it without it i need these pieces on my face like angelina jolie mm. had that with mm -hmm. maleficent very heavily she very clearly knew what she was getting into uh never complained never you know it's like three hours each morning and then after 16 hours another hour to take it off they're very very long days and you have to uh, navigate a lot of and it's a lot of personal because you you're with that person for a very long time. So. Very intimate. Yes, it's very intimate. What's what's the like craziest application that you've ever had to do? Like how long? Oh, um, it'd probably be like six hours. Six hours. Yeah. What, do you uh, remember? I think the Ring Girl. And the Ring then, Girl. Uh, the Pale Man. Although a different team ended up applying that on set, but that was about a six hour makeup. I believe mm. that was for DDT. And um, yeah, so it, 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 it grueling times sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I can only imagine like Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy. That had to be like yeah. Although over time they 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 could speed it up. Yeah, because mm. you get the thing with practical is in makeup. It's like you you do it one time, and then on the next film you say, "Oh, if we do it again, we'll 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 change it up so it goes faster." Um, and so it has gone faster. You just it, it's neat because you get to it's almost like you're beta testing constantly. Yes. Every iteration gets faster and faster and better. Yeah. Or, or like, you know, 3D printing technology. Oh, exactly. Out, you know? Yeah. Which we are also using, of yeah. course, with scanning faces and yeah. all that. Yeah. That's great. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> with this, I'm, I'm not even going to ask you if you ever wanted to get out of the business because <laughs> I, I you <laughs> eat, you drink, <laughs> sleep this because sometimes you know at a certain point yeah. you're like you know i'm gonna step away i mean some of the greats rick stepped away at a certain point he could still be cranking out inevitably he i don't ever is. He i don't he's yeah. doing great with great stuff I've well he, he yeah so over time uh we grew very close but yeah i i will never leave makeup uh mm -hmm. i'm i have no intention of, of becoming a director or, or a production designer of any sort um I just love it too much. I know I will always be doing this. Um, but um, Rick, I think you got a little tired of the business and getting older. And, um, you know, um, I, I understand. I think at that age where you're like, I'm just going to do my personal. You got to remember the shop, a massive place that costs a lot of money every year, oh, even yeah. if it's empty. You know, um, I, I think he made the right decision. I've heard he's he's thrown some hell of a you know amazing halloween parties is that like he doesn't do it anymore yeah he did yeah but back yeah, in the day yeah he, it was always a treat to see because it was like everybody in the in the in the makeup they world, would right? pretty much all show up everyone yeah. would show and up and it was up. like yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah, yeah. look what i can do sure <laughs> look how crazy my costume is kind of a thing yeah it looks rad yeah always regretted not being able to go to one of those yeah yeah, yeah. to emphasize the dedication 
yeah. and the focus when I met you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to share a little story that um, I met you. You were in the midst of a two-month sculpt of an old Indian woman's face mm-hmm. that was so detailed that you were only going to apply it for a weekend and then throw it away. Yeah, there's makeup for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But no one understands, like you mentioned about putting time in, mm. like you were working during the day and then you spent the time at night yes. to turn around and sculpt another three or four hours. That's right. That this, it was just so you could learn to put the detail in, you know, the wrinkles and the face in just for a weekend. It wasn't even for a film. Yeah. I would do all the lab work, molding, casting of the prosthetics and uh, yeah. It, yeah. I mean, what time would you leave or would you not leave? Um, There were many nights I wouldn't leave. I would just sleep in the break room. Uh, There was a big couch. Um, (laughs) I was just so excited to be there. Nothing else mattered to me but that stuff. And and, And, and that passion, right? We'll call it passion, is what drives you to not think about the time, to excel you to be the top of your game. When, right. Well, I wasn't necessarily looking for that. It just, it just, I was just so very it's a passionate byproduct. about it. Yeah, it's and, a byproduct of spending the time. Yeah. But yeah. that, but that's what I'm saying. It's a byproduct. It, it doesn't feel like anything when it is something that you love, and it it doesn't matter whether you're sleeping there or up for 16 hours or it, it you're doing something you love, so it doesn't matter. Right. right. And and we just want all our new artists listening to this to understand you got it you if you don't have that passion you you need to go to a nine to five job because it's going to become boring or you're not going to put the time in right right yeah Yeah. but you know what to speak to that though that you know there's nothing wrong in having a hobby either true you know especially in this climate of of what we're dealing with right you know if you know if if you you know don't take the time for self-care at this point you know with everything that's going on yeah but at this but it's very true. Like if you want to do it professionally, you got to be putting in professional hours. Yeah, that's very yeah, true. for sure. That's very true. N- now with the industry kind of slow, there's mm-hmm. not really any work going on. Mm-hmm. Do you still go into your shop? Yeah, every day. Every day? Yeah. And what are you doing in your shop every day? Uh, sculpting. Uh, I do a little bit of cleaning now, but um, <laughs> oil painting, a dry, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So once again, you're consistently refining, <laughs> refining, and you're just doing art. I can't yeah. emphasize that enough. The importance of when you love it and it's there, you just do it. It's natural. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it brings up, uh, we were talking a little earlier about the first nomination mm-hmm. for the Academy Award. I saw the Vanity Fair spot mm-hmm. uh, of of you in the car. I was promoting a car. <laughs> But you didn't even know that you were promoting the car. No, so that because people ask me sometimes, and I, I they surprise when I say that, but I really didn't. I wasn't aware. So what happens is I, I I got that nomination, and this just this whirlwind of stuff comes over you in the sense of you know interviews and and people, especially in Europe and Holland, wanting to talk to me and all that stuff. And I was just a bit overwhelmed by it all, and I'm also not very attracted to that side of the business. So. Um, and they said, yeah, Fanny Fair wants to do a piece. And I actually remember asking Rick and Sylvia, Rick Baker and his wife, should I do this? And they're like, absolutely, you need to do this. I'm like, oh, it's a little pompous. You know, why would I do this? You know, like, <laughs> and why are they interested in me? You know, and uh, but they're like, so because of them, uh, like, okay, well, then they must be right. So I did it. And uh, <laughs> I remember during the filming of it, his car and I had to they constantly polished it up and, and I had to put my seat back. And I suddenly started to dawn on me. I was actually in a car commercial. I have no clue. <laughs> so you spent the whole day shooting this car commercial. Yeah. And he, well, it was a legit interview and, and and it was very nice and very great people and they had great questions and and but yeah, the second part of it is was this car <laughs> that I couldn't figure out, you know. <laughs> what, a fancy, what a trip, but, you know. That's hilarious, yeah. Well, you've handled it well, by the way. Oh, well, thank you. I, I mean, you're humble. Oh, I hope it comes across because the makeup field probably thought, well, who's this? Look at this guy. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Hollywood. Yeah. No, I, like I said, you keep your feet planted. Right. You're focused. Yeah. And you keep on doing the work. Who were your inspirations to get into this industry? Um, well, first, for being so young and just before the internet, I, it was more the movies. But mm-hmm. uh, when I was 16 and I was in makeup school in Amsterdam, 
uh, I started to learn about Tom Savini, uh, Rick Baker, Dick Smith, Stan mm -hmm. Winston, obviously the names, you know, Rob Oteen, another one. Um, um, so definitely that era, just because I was an 80s kid. Um, yeah. What, what, what was your favorite films in the 80s? My, some of my favorite films, uh, Ghostbusters, obviously. Of course. Uh, of course. Uh, Goonies. Oh, that's uh, my favorite. Harry and Henderson's still one of my favorites. Gremlins. Uh, and then Amadeus, a little bit more serious. Beautiful aging work by, by Dick Smith. Um, gosh, it's just this list, but most of them are from that era. And I think it just, depending on what time you're born. But Yeah, no, okay, I, but. I, I, you mentioned Goonies, still one of my favorites. Back um, to the Future. That's uh, one absolutely. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, which you just can't. Th there are a lot of movies, and there was so much makeup through those and the, the um, artistry. I, I don't know if anyone really realizes how much artistry goes in because all the great makeup artists, you're one of them, by the way, uh, the sculpting ability, the painting ability, you have a natural artistic background. Mm. I mean, when I was at stands to see everybody sculpting in clay, blew right. my mind to walk through the shop and see that it was tangible. You guys are all standing next to these pedestals. Um, do you still get into clay? You still yes, do? Yes, yes, a lot. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, well, we we talk briefly. We talked about it, but uh, when you run a company, obviously some some of that stuff you have to hand over. But maybe I'm lucky that I'm dyslexic and I can't calculate and write. <laughs> you know, so um, um, I, I I have Linda at the office and I have Elliot and I have great. People that do that are really good at that, and I'm just not good at it. So why should I do it? That's right. You hire uh, the right people. So I hire the right people, and that are great at it, mm -hmm. and are helping me in it. And I should be focusing on what I'm good at. And uh, so on Ghostbusters, even though I had a lot of people, not all at the same time, but they came in groups because different departments came through. But um, I was able to still build and sculpt a lot of stuff. Yeah. Now, do you get into any of the digital tools of ZBrush or Photoshop? I have actually in 2004, I started with ZBrush, but I, I like getting messy. I like tangible materials. Um, but um, now that the shop is pretty much finished, we just did a bunch of construction and, and all kinds of spray booths and all that stuff. Um, now I'm, I'm more also looking into printers and uh, I know it's a little late to some people, but um, it's never too late. And uh, oh, it's never too we've been too busy next yeah. to that. So that there's hey, amen to say you're too busy. That's that's what you want, yeah. when, especially when you're running a shop. Yeah. Who taught you your work ethic? Um, good question, actually. I I think it just naturally came just because I never uh, forgot where I'm from. And, you know, I think um, coming to the States and seeing all these people um, doing so great, it just pushed me, uh, you know, uh, in hindsight, looking back, how grateful that I was to um, intern under all those people, you know, um, and that's so valuable. Uh, uh, and I think it came from that, like, look, what's what's possible, you know, but it's up to you, kiddo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, you've worked for some, some you know, crazy, notable, you know, legends in, in that industry. Right. You know, I mean, just the fact that you, you've, you've pretty much hit almost every single one is, is pretty good. Yeah, amazing, again, I didn't know. plan it that way. Just because yeah. of immigration, you couldn't just hop to another shop. Uh, but yeah, I, and, and maybe it's a great thing that I came from another continent and and not taking things here for granted you you have That's amazing true. things here in this country that you have no place else and um perhaps i just yeah as a sponge i was just absorbing anything it didn't matter grateful yeah. to be here that's i mean that's the best way to do it any anywhere no matter what job you're at there's always something to take away from it you know very true um you know or in you know some of the design studios that i worked at i mean it literally i just paid attention and I was like, yeah, I can do that. And that's just yeah, yeah. how I started doing my own right, jobs. Yeah. Right, right, Yeah. Can you share how, you know, what you went about becoming intern at these shops? Because you were in Europe. Yeah. It's not like you, you drove up and knocked on the door. No, and, and this said, is also just before all the internet. And uh, so, you know, I, I, I remember uh, I was already working. I was 18 on local TV crime series and stuff like that, doing little bullet wounds and cutthroats <laughs> and, cool. you know, but I was happy because I was working and I was doing this stuff. Um, 
And I started corresponding with Dick Smith, who at the time had a home study course that you could buy. And they were a lot I remember cheaper. that. I've seen, I, I haven't seen the actual, mm -hmm. I've seen old photos of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a, it's literally, yeah, it's like a, a makeup home Bible, kit. really. Um, like a chemistry set. Like, yeah. You would, like yeah. you would get a chemistry set when you were a kid. It looked, it looked very similar from what I can remember. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so, and I started corresponding with him. I would send him some pictures of stuff that I would make by mail. And uh, he and I would wait a week and then I would call him to see if he'd received it. And I would call him in New York and he would always answer. And uh, <laughs> What a trip. How did you get his phone number? Uh, it was through the, the course. You would, okay. he would He would give you the information. You could call him. You could correspond with him. And uh, at first he was a little... Um, he was a little cold in that sense. It was like, you know, because he, he couldn't figure out that I was that young. You know, like I think I was 17 or 16, 17. And in his mind, I was 29 or something. I don't mm -hmm. know what happened. But he, and once he found out, he was like, oh my God, you should, you know, and then I, you know, but he was, what a great thing. You know, unfortunately he's, he's passed, but uh, I mean, what a legacy he leaves behind. But, uh, yeah. you know, uh, but I would correspond with him and he inter introduced me to Stan Winston, uh, and uh, Steve Johns and a bunch of these earlier guys. So when I would come out here, and then you packed up, came over. I here. packed up my my all my stuff. I didn't have much, and uh, no money. And uh, yeah, so, so <laughs> <laughs> you have no money, and you're interning. How, how did you? What did you live off of? Like, uh, there was actually a TV show that I had done in Holland that uh, would help kids with less fortunate. Okay. backgrounds and really uh, yeah. that's amazing that's awesome well i didn't want to do that but i called dick smith and i said should i do this and he's like you should do this it, because you come from welfare you need to like you have no other option I'm yeah like, yeah good point yeah. so uh and i kind of wanted to show and they had a little bit of money and with that i was able to live six months in la so the whole plan was i would go to la for six months i think it was 19 and that was going to be it i was going to go back to holland I'm like, yeah, no way I'm going back, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I I lived as cheaply as I could of that little bit of money. It was before the Euro, it was Gilders yeah. at the time. And uh, living out of cans of beans and stuff and make sure that I could stretch that little bit of money as much as I could. And within that time, I was able to convince Stan or he, I think, had one of his people call me in the office one day and she said, um, Stan just was here and he said, he wants to keep you here no matter what. So we're going to take care of it. And that was it. I think I That's cried amazing. a little bit. But yeah. That's awesome. Uh, you know, um, put it out there and and you will receive. Yeah. You know, yeah. put the energy out there. Um, once again, that is so inspiring. Um, you took a chance. And, and I think that's one of the most important things that people need to understand when they want to push through these walls and barriers. Um, were you afraid? Were you afraid of failure? Uh, yeah, but that's that comes as being an artist. It's a curse at the same time we're born with, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's like never an, good it's enough. An imposter syndrome. Is, yeah, yeah. Uh, but at in all, our industry. yeah. Um, but it's um, I, funny enough because I was not a daring kid at all ever. I was I never left my bedroom. You know, I, I was very uh, never very intimidated on a bus or a public you know what I mean I was very yeah. quiet uh, but that step to the United States for some reason I took very very easily and I remember forgot to call my mom in the first three weeks and she was pretty freaked out but I was working for Kevin Yeager I was interning there and there's all this child's play stuff and Nightmare and Elsie I, I completely forgot <laughs> like, I was so excited <laughs> to be here <laughs> your poor <laughs> mom is like is he a he's duck? Dead. Is he yeah, he's like, well, she literally thought I was shot because I, she knew I was biking around <laughs> at night because I would leave so late. What do you mean you were biking? You, you got everywhere on your bicycle? Yeah, because I had no car, no money. I, I just hope everybody that's listening that wants to be an artist. So, <laughs> so far, he had no money. In LA, he biked everywhere. Now, um, you mentioned earlier, and, and we got to share this, like, you mentioned something about tell that story about you planning to get here and you figured ah, i'll just bike it and it wasn't a big issue oh right well again this is just before the internet hit so coming from holland everything is so small that i had no concept Bi before. bike capital of the world pretty much i think too. yeah yeah <laughs> of the certain just the sheer size of this town alone um and uh i had looked at a map in holland i'm like well if i stay at this motel because I couldn't afford a hotel so it was a motel 
uh, in Calabasas. And uh, I'm like, well, I can bike that to, San, to Van Nuys because that doesn't look too long. That's just, but little did I know that was a 12 lane <laughs> freeway for Oof. 40 miles from Calabasas <laughs> yeah, to that's... Van Nuys. I had no clue. Um, <laughs> so, so did you attempt to bike it when you were? No, I just remember like, let me just walk out there and see what's, you know, so it was a hundred <laughs> degrees. I wasn't used to that. And uh, I remember this lady jogging like, what's this lanky, skinny kid doing out here with a map? And uh, <laughs> she's like, what do you need, kiddo? Like, I'm like, oh, I'm looking for this address. And she's like, uh, I think you're a little ways away, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. That's funny. Like, I, I moved out here. With I I moved down here with with uh you know I had a a roommate lined up, and then literally it didn't happen, like oh yeah very very like like you know just a few days like can't do it and it was like oh crap well I'm ready to go I'm starting school I've got to get out there right so I just got out there I had already sold my car because he had a car oh right and I was like you know like. That's the trade off. I'll get rid of my car. I can afford to stay out here a little bit longer. So no, I I remember I remember I had to hoof it. I had to hoof it everywhere. <sighs> I remember, yeah. It's not a fun hoof hoof it. What's hoof it? Hoof it like walking around. Oh, around. Rocking, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Is hoof it like a midwestern maybe? Yes. Yes. The answer yeah. is yes. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I was like, I I know what it is. I, I'm not from the Midwest. So I was like, East Coast thing. I yeah. understand what that is. You're just no, looking. You're just looking at the map, and you're like, yeah, it looks. Yeah, yeah. That's five minutes in a car. Right. That's 45 right. minutes in the hot hot sun yeah. to get like a mile. Yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe there's a, a thing with the saying goes, naivete goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, yeah yes, it true. Of, yeah. of you were here, you're just like, I'm just going to make it happen and not. Well, I remember also when I arrived, I lost all my luggage. <laughs> and uh, I was at this motel, I had no clothes and, uh, and there was no place to eat other than McDonald's. So I had McDonald's for two weeks straight, three weeks uh, because there's nothing else. <laughs> uh, I remember actually I was so sick of it that I bought a gallon of milk at a local gas station and a hundred plastic spoons because it you know, came in a pack a hundred <laughs> and uh, I and some cereal because I had to throw up from all these McDonald's that uh, I can't say that. And uh, <laughs> they're I, not a sponsor. I, you know you're how all these right. motels have these little nylon plastic ice buckets? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I ate cereal out of that because mm. I you no plates. It. So, <laughs> so you, your one bowl in the place was the ice bucket. Yeah, because there was nothing else. And, and you had fifty plastic spoons and a box of hundred plastic spoons. What, what, were, what was your choice of cereal? If you could have bought one, you would have just bought the one, right? Yeah, but it yeah, only came in a packet of a hundred at the local gas station. Yeah, so uh, I had a hundred plastic spoons and some milk. And what was your cereal of choice? No, I don't remember. You don't remember the plain. I like plain. I like everything plain. Do you eat cereal anymore again? Or Sometimes, not? but it reminds me of that. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, that. You know, we're laughing right now, <laughs> but you probably eating cereal grounds you and realizes that, you know, I still need to push hard. Oh, yeah. But again, I just arrived. So it was all in a big adventure. And, uh, you know, I'm grateful. It's also a good thing to go through that. Along, along the way, was there anything that you that you say, uh, you know, maybe you didn't do so well at while you're working in studios or? Um, not artistically, uh, I can't think of anything, but maybe, I don't know. Um, like, were, was there any, was there anything that you felt that you failed at, but you learned from and kept going? And kept oh, going? absolutely. Uh, there's definitely some movies I didn't want to do. Yeah. Like I felt, oh, that's a failure, uh, you know, or critics going over it, mm -hmm. uh, but it's inevitable. Yeah. Especially when you, when you grow to that size or level and you get high, it's inevitable. I, because otherwise you might have not, not not done it at all. Yeah. So yeah, there's no way of not failing. Yeah. Do you do you still feel sensitive? Yes, but that's again, it's an artist thing. Uh, you know, I I what I do, I take very very personal, and sometimes too much, um, where I'm grind over it and it has to be done again, and it's never good enough. The thing with practical effects is make effects often it's like you get one or two tests if if any, uh, but once you're on set, that's it. Yeah. for months yeah. and you can't go back. So that pressure is, is it's not a, it's not a push of a button when you have to, when you can erase something, you can't do that. Yeah. So it's, it, it is a, it's a tough, it's a tough one. And again, it's, it's a, being an artist, um, to the bone, really it, I think we can all relate where, uh, you know, if I do it again, I would do it differently. Differently. 
with the challenge, not the challenges, with, you know, seeing the work that you said failed at, um, what do you, what do you feel is your most successful? That you've, you know, uh, you're like, I nailed hard it. Hard to say because I'm not happy with anything, but. Uh, <laughs> true typical, artist. True artist, yeah. Yeah, no, but for real. So, um, and it also different because makeup effects is so different. Every film is so different um, that I can't really pinpoint one. Um, I guess people still come up to me about Wonder. They come up to me about Pan's Labyrinth. They come up to me about Maleficent. And I'm sure next year, Ghostbusters. So it's cool to have a few films, uh, I think, uh, that leave something behind. They're not, As you know, not all of them, most of them don't do that. Um, so, um, yeah. How, how was it to work on Ghostbusters, the new Ghostbusters? It was great. Uh, I mean, having grown up with the first two, uh, I remember my dad taking me to the cinema to see part two. I was nine. Um, a life box checked off, really. Um, I, I just, I had to do this film. And um, it was your holy grail. Yeah. yeah well, like, one gotta, of them. One yeah, of them, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was an official part three. And uh, I met with Jason and we instantly hit it off. I knew exactly what he meant. And when I would bring up stuff, he would he'd pick up. That's it. That's it. You know. Um, so and also on this particular one, going back to really the aesthetic of the first film from 84. So where things are slightly scary uh, and it's a very handcrafted feel to all aspects of the film. Um, but I can't say too much, but it's it's yeah. I think, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll have you back when it comes out in March. Sounds good. To talk oh, yeah, about be it. Because yeah, then we can Absolutely. do it. We, we'll do a deeper dive. But did you have to audition for this to get this? Were you uh, up against other shops? Yeah. From what I was told, they were talking to other shops, but which is normal when you do that in visual effects, I guess. And yeah. You know, too, uh, Everybody so, does it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think uh, we just had a personal connection. And I instantly, as I said, there was just an understanding mutual. You know why, right? Because right? you. Because you love those movies. Yeah. And it just, he knew. It and, was permeating uh, off of you, yeah. you know, when when they met you and they're like, oh, this guy gets it. Yeah. Plus, he's yeah. only three years older than I am. So there you go. we yeah. just had a lot of the same love about, oh, I love that film. I love that shot. I love that scene and that one, you know. So it, it was just, it, yeah. Almost, it was a synergy. Yeah. yeah. That's great. No, that, that's 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 amazing to be able to work on that. I mean. I had, uh, I had one of my best times in my life on that show, even so, though it was such a large crew getting all the stuff done um it was it was great no well i look forward to be able to do a deep dive with you on that yeah one. i'll say this back. one thing i said what? to my crew like this is going to be a summer to remember oh that's awesome yeah, that's was, awesome yeah, yeah. So, so I have so many questions of like what it was like on the set, but we're, we're, we'll, I, I can't, no, 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 we'll <laughs> do that. We'll yeah. respect because we, yeah. we know is that tattoo, the NDA tattoo on your arm. <laughs> yeah. You can't talk about That's anything. Right. I mean, how many, do, how many times do we sign? Well, up also Jason was very adamant about aside from having the Sony NDAs, let's keep this a secret and really may, let this unfold as a present because it's been 35 years, 36. Yeah. And I think we all as a crew promised him that because so much stuff gets leaked nowadays yeah. and everything is always out. Yeah. And it's like, why stop doing that? So I think we're all doing our job. Yeah, no, that's good. definitely. Um, so it was a very team environment. It seems like since you guys synced, yeah. you, you guys just, you know, had that energy. You, you, you were thinking each other's thoughts and knowing what each other want. That's amazing to be able to be on a project like that. So <clears throat> with working for Stan, working for Rick, um, when did you realize you wanted to go out on your own and, and really venture out? When was um, that moment? Actually, well, I never really, I, I can, it was more a feeling of like, oh, I can feel it coming. I'm going to have to now. It was more that because my idea was never that oh, I'm going to start my own company or my own studio or, or I was just going to work for these, these, these more bigger than life individuals. Because to me, they were bigger than life. Rick Baker's to me is bigger than life. His name is Stan Winston. And you don't ever think that that will end at any time, but it does. And um, I think working for Rick, uh, when he announced that he was going to retire, we were in the car one day because I was helping for about a year. I helped clean out his shop. And uh, uh, we kind of grew, we became friends and became very close. And he turned to me in the car one day and he said, you need to, you know, you need to start on your own. Like you, you worked for Stan, you worked for me. Like you, you can't go anywhere else. You have to do your own thing. And I, and he was right. I could feel it coming. 
So um, as you're talking to us, I'm seeing that you're very open to to mentors. You talked about Dick, Stan, and Rick. Some people aren't open to that advice. And and did did you and I, tell me if I, I cross mm-hmm. the line? Were they, did they kind of become like a father figure? Is your time spent with them or? I think, uh, yes, Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, a lot of things happened in my childhood. So perhaps uh, to me, um, you know, I connected with that and and perhaps they felt that, Um, you know, I remember the last time I met Stan, uh, I just because I had to go back in 2003, I went back to Europe Mm -hmm. because I had to wait for my immigration papers. So even though I was so depressed, I remember, but I got to work on Pan's Labyrinth. So how cool is that? But. Uh, I remember visiting LA for a few days just because I had to need some papers signed and I met Stan again and I could tell something was wrong and uh, but he took the time to meet me and uh, we sat in the display room and I brought some pictures and he uh, saw the pictures of the pale man and he's like you did this I'm like yeah I worked in Spain on with DDT and they did he's like this is one of the best things I've ever like it's like you know I, I had I was that's awesome. I was meaning to criticize you, but I can't say other than proud of you. And he gave me a big hug. And that was the <laughs> last time I saw Stan. Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what year did he pass? 2008. 2008. Um, no. And to be open enough to hear from these greats, mm-hmm. to actually take their advice. Um, it's so important. I've through my life, I've asked, you, you know, I don't even think people realize that they were mentors to me you right. know, for certain things, but you need guidance in your life through your journey because certain times decisions are hard to make. And if you respect somebody in your life, which you had these greats, yes. that's amazing that you were able to sit with them and have that connection. Very, very valuable. I don't think anybody that rises to a certain level can do without, or they're just too arrogant, really. I mean, you 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 meet people in your lifetime that will give you that little push you need at yeah. the right time, at the right place. Yeah, and you can't be closed off. So um, if you're open to it, yeah, yeah, but that, you got to recognize this. That's it, very true. Sometimes yeah. you yeah. got to be like, you know, I, you know, it's there. There's there's a bad habit of of ego. True. Yeah, that can happen. Yeah, there, but, you know, yeah, that's very but, true. You know, knowing knowing where to stop and listen to absorb of everything you can is. It's almost a skill these days. Yeah. yeah. I sometimes think back, it might be a cultural thing too, because mm-hmm. Europe, Europeans, and I have, I think uh, growing up, it's a very, uh, you have to respect your elders a little bit more. Um, I don't know. There's, it's just a different vibe. So I, that might have something to do with it. I, I and, and I have to agree. Um, a lot of artists that I've hired from Europe, the, um, you know, and, and I'm not putting down anybody. I've had great artists that I've hired everywhere, right? But sure. there's a certain work ethic or vibe that I've gotten from the European artists coming over. And I don't know. And, and I think I should say I do kind of know. I think it's that it's the respect the elders. There's this foundation of the old school that's embedded in them. And our kids nowadays, it we've broken away from that. Right, right. And I'm always thinking of how to get that back because or it'll slant me to hire somebody a little different because they understand the work that needs to go into it and they're not afraid to put the hours in. Well, I'm sure it's not everybody. I'm just saying, uh, thinking back, it might have something. Yeah, no, and, and I don't think it's everybody. I like Once again, to be clear, I've hired amazing artists from the States and they're talented and this, but there's, you mentioned there's that little difference yeah. there. And, and, and maybe I'm, coming over here, appreciating all the opportunities you guys have here. Like, you know, you, this is a, this is an amazing town, an amazing country on top of that. It, it, I, I think that's a good point to point out that um, being from the outside looking in, yes. y- you observe it a little more of like, oh, my God, you get to do this and do that. Yes. I had um, uh, this isn't, doesn't even mean I don't know if it associates with it, <laughs> but we, we can get anything 24 seven. Right. Right. And when you're in Europe that something you know your cable goes down that may be down for two weeks the guy doesn't show <laughs> it's not up that tomorrow. bad michael <laughs> <laughs> they just take their time you know. take the, but it's the you know it's the understanding that you know that you know the the long game takes time and you need to be patient right. and you need to be appreciative when things are passed on or things are shared with you right. and it seems with these mentors you were open to it 
and you were um, willing to take it and listen. Yeah, so right. them, but also all the people that worked there. You got to mention, like you remember, it was yeah. sometimes 130 people. I mean, that shop. place. Yeah, when, when I was at Stanford, even from my experience, I was on the digital side, so I didn't. Believe me, I, I can't No, but still anything. people like Aaron and, and then, but also uh, uh, the sculptors and mold makers from, from the fabricators to like, these were all most really amazing people. And I knew it was valuable right away. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I picked up that energy to walk into, uh, you know, stands and see the T3 and to see the dinosaurs hanging up in the studio. Yeah, yeah. I felt like a little kid and you do realize he had this amazing showroom with all the characters around and you stepped in that room and you were like, Oh my God, look at all these characters. This is my, this is my youth. This is amazing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I get it. So to new artists coming out, what do you recommend to new artists starting out? What can they focus on? What, what, any recommendation do you give them starting out? Yeah. I mean, I feel old now, but <laughs> you you're know, not old. No, but it, it, find what you truly love to do and uh and and you know, good things will happen don't expect it all to happen within two weeks you mean um just keep at it um um yeah some people search a little longer but that's okay too you know you like different mediums uh that's fine you mean so but keep at it uh, don't get distracted by the city you know lots of parties they're all nonsense you know, most of them you know, they just don't don't get don't fall into that um, just just keep at it and yeah i mean you're sleeping on the floor and stands man you you didn't get distracted <laughs> at all you were sleeping on a piece of That's foam and yeah <laughs> i lived there for about three weeks at one point i didn't have an apartment i did that you lived at stands for three weeks. yeah I when i came back like... in 08 uh i finally had my green card yeah and uh i had no place no money broke again uh been broke many times by the way <laughs> and uh yeah i lived at the studio once again yeah <laughs> that's it's you know it's crazy it's like the the difference in, in in the time like there's a lot of you know online stuff you can learn from now right, right, you know right. and there's there's actual there is, i believe it's cinema makeup school yeah there's a lot more schools there's now. a lot more yeah, the yeah. knowledge base is getting yeah. spread which is good because yeah. you know for a while there it really seemed like it was going to die you know and and no one was going to pass on any of that yeah, knowledge yeah. But yeah. now it seems to be, it's like even it's getting even stronger with practical on the rise. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, digital on the rise at the same time and the merging of those two. Yeah, the merging, again, Ghostbusters would probably be a great yeah. example of that. Uh, and I have some very close friends who are visual effects artists. So, yeah. Well, looking with technology come, we, we, did a, we did an episode on um, virtual production. I'm thinking, you know, with virtual production and these LED screens that there's going to be a call again for more makeup because mm -hmm. they're starting to shoot more stuff in camera, which is a bonus for you guys, all the makeup guys, because they know in the, you know, early 2000, it started to dip away and yeah. from, like, yeah. you know, 2010, it dipped away. And I've seen a resurgence of the makeup coming back. Right. Yeah, I've noticed it and the requests we get, you know, as well. I think, I think public i think the, the audience is a little bit of a longing to it too in that sense that there's a certain aesthetic to it there's just i remember on 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 ghostbusters the visual effects team awesome alessandro and and, and uh carrie would come up to me and going like yeah it's just there's something about it that just if done right it's just it's this magical moment you capture that you couldn't make up or program right. and it's those little moments you capture that is just make do something it, it, yeah it's those nuances that once it capturing it in camera yeah is y you know you're not worrying about animation you know well, it caught the light at a certain moment you didn't expect or yeah. it 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 just it, it the happy accidents and a happy accident yeah. is very very well said yeah. right there uh and uh that shouldn't go away um i love visual effects i think it's an amazing thing and as i said i have many friends in, in the visual effects world but um i'm a huge fan of miniature stuff a miniature great. Great. so cool great yeah love doing um so. so again i don't think makeup will ever go um, oh no no it's just that's never gonna go anywhere it's just but you're right there's a bit of a surge now and, uh, which, which is great and i i love the mix anyway and, and i love figuring out what needs to be and what doesn't need to mm -hmm, be mm -hmm. but with this new virtual production these led walls we're going to get more and more stuff in camera and you said those happy accidents 
happy accidents. Mm -hmm. You can't tell a CG artist to make that happen in the computer. It you just doesn't yeah. happen. Well, it, look, it's so great <clears throat> that you have this tool now that you mm -hmm. can control everything and 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 really refine it and stuff. But there's also a bit of a downfall to that in that sense is that you're over controlling it. So there's never a mistake or in that sense that there is um, a happy accident because you're controlling everything. So everything is possible. That's another thing. For example, if you watch aliens, they were restricted because the puppet can only move so far, can only move four feet, and then it's going to turn its head. So Scott or, or um, uh, James Cameron had to probably think about, well, if I can't shoot it this way, I'm going to have to put the camera here. Like you were forced to be very creative, perhaps more yeah. on set and, and f f resolve problems on the spot because there was nothing else. Right. right. Um, and that also made for a lot of great filmmaking. It, it did. made for a lot of scary moments that are just m so memorable that will go into time. Whereas now everything is possible. And I've noticed on sets a lot that, well, we'll just figure it out in post. In other words, it's just almost a, it's not, a, I don't want to say laziness, but it's like an easy way out mm -hmm. and you're not it's creating. It's an afterthought. Yes. And it should be the forethought, you know, like. And it's gone lost a little bit, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And this is just a changing of times and it's all great. And as I said, uh, I think visual effects are amazing, but maybe it's been overused a bit. Well, I, like I said, I'm thinking now with stuff happening in pre, right? All the planning has to be in pre now. We're going to find that balance. Because I think about a third of visual effects artists have to go on the front end and, mm -hmm. and, and plan mm -hmm. all this stuff out. And we're going to answer those what, where, and why questions early enough now that when you get it in camera, you're going to get those moments back. Right. But I've also noticed because everybody's getting older and, and generations change is that people for, like productions forget as to if you want practical effects and you want in camera makeup, you got to start months before. You yeah. Know? That's not nothing you they can pick up at the corner. And no. Be, oh, and they, they don't, they don't like, Oh, we're hey. four weeks out from shooting. Can you build us this stuff? I'm like, yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> got to make sure and prep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, we've had discussions with, with the virtual production yeah. that, you know, if pre-production is normally three months, mm -hmm. just the round number, you have to add almost another 20 weeks on to the pre-production because assets need to be built out to get them into those LED walls, which now benefits you. And we can have those discussions early enough. You know, what is the balance between practical and visual effects mm -hmm. that now you're going to have that time to actually be able to build it out and actually plan it and, and get that time? Because I, you know, I've taken calls that they, they want stuff even on CG and We've done mix of practical and, mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, we should do this practical. And you're like, no, you don't have enough time. It's like three weeks. Right. Ago. Because the, the danger of practical is, is that if you then get a company that maybe says yes, because they desperately need some work, uh, then it either doesn't look too good or you're like, well, this wasn't what we were hoping. And then, but then right. again, you're stuck because yeah. practical, that's, you know, once you're on set, that's it. So. Yeah. And, and then you end up, they, they, if, when you have to replace it, if it doesn't work, yeah, well, that, they yeah. haven't shot clean plates, they haven't shot anything. And then the shot costs three times the amount it would have if you just right. done full sheet. And and there was no VFX supervisor on set exactly. on these shots. So you're like, there's no HDRI generated. There's no nothing. Yeah, it's. So I'm happy with kind of, I, I don't want to say it's a full circle that, that it's going back to it. It's going to be a happy medium that's coming about from what's going on of the balance they're trying to figure out yeah, because they're yeah. trying to get on set. They're trying to get uh, productions back and, you know, filming again. Right, right. And we can do the pre-production in this virtual production world that if we all meet by Zoom, you get your orders, we get our orders to build these assets, to mm -hmm. design mm -hmm. and do all that. We go off, do it. And then we have the controlled environment on set again and we're getting it in camera so i'm happy that this is kind of happening because it's forcing us to re-educate ourselves and turn the ship into a direction that's going to be benefit filmmaking right right well yeah storytelling i, I would say yep. in that sense so because i, I kind of thought about the last 20 years i'm like what is a monster i truly truly remember mm-hmm from Do you last, have one from the last 20 years? Yeah, that I, that's really going to go into time like Predator or Terminator or, you know, that's something that's so handcrafted, so well thought out. Uh, I don't know. It's, I really it's, like Super 8. Super 8's creature Super, was yeah, pretty interesting. Yeah, but then yeah. again, he, JJ came from makeup effects. He used to be a makeup effects artist. He used to be a student from Dick Smith. Mm. 
So he probably there was a little shout Abrams out. Abrams was? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I did not know yeah. that. Yeah. That's he a was a Dick Smith student. Oh wow. And that's why there's did a shout you know out. That? I didn't know I, that. I didn't know that. That's why the oh, kid wow. carries his makeup kit around and it's a shout out to uh, Dick oh, Smith. Oh no way. I didn't even connect the two. That's amazing. No, uh, that's the, uh, Monster I Maker's that. Handbook. That's yeah, the, yeah, yeah. That's I remember that. Smith. Yeah. Um oh wow. I think the reason we don't have something as memorable is with the introduction to visual effects uh there was this mentality of like we're paying for it so we have to see it right and we have to throw it out there yeah so there isn't any of this mystery when you go back to the 80s they had to you know shadow it film it because of limitations of like you were talking about earlier about the cables and it could only move four feet out so you had to light it within shadows and you shot these mysterious eerie shots you had to you had to hide your magic yeah. yeah, and Jaws, it, Jaws, yeah, another That's great example, right? It broke. If Jaws would have been made now, it, it sank, probably, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, first yeah, one yeah. sunk to the bottom <laughs> of the ocean. <laughs> I mean, so, and I don't know how many times in VFX meetings I was like, just show less, just don't. And they're like, no, well, we got it and we built it and we rigged it. Mm-hmm. Let's show it. It's like no. And when you go back, less is more. Yeah. yeah, when you go back to those films, yeah, you realize what made him great is that your mind created a lot That's of right. what a it was. A lot of it is up to the imagination. Yes. And with throwing it out in the open all the time, you're not imagining anything. So you watch it, you go like, okay, okay, it's a monster. But those 80s films, you were like, oh no, your mind was building out what you couldn't see. And your mind will always create something way scarier yeah. than what they ever show. Right, right. So it was that happy medium. And maybe we get it back, you know, yeah. that it's not I that. Mean, I, I mean, I hope so, because those moments are, I, I scared the shit out of me in those movies. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> yeah. But Definitely. Um, Gremlins is, is is a sleeper. Yeah. Gremlins, <laughs> yeah. Everyone thinks Gremlins was, was cute. And then like, no, that was the second one. Like the first one was really terrifying. If yeah. you go back and we watch it again, like it was pretty scary. Yeah. Yeah. I remember being scared, but then like want still wanting a mogwai at the end of the, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I still want that thing. Yeah. Which, and that was all puppets. Yeah. Yeah. That was Rick Baker. Wires and The strings. first one was uh, Chris Wales and then the second film was Rick Baker. Yeah. My, that's just, I, I love that. It's, Have it's, you guys ever been to the prop store in mm-hmm. Burbank? I think it's in Burbank. Yeah, I think they came by when Rick. It's really cool. Stuff, yeah. You can go in there, and they do have stuff for sale, but they mostly do a lot of auctions. But man, do they have some amazing movie history in there? Mm. They had they had one of the you know what was left of the puppet for a grim like one of the Mogwais. They had a gremlin that was falling apart, but still there. They had yeah. the the original Queen Alien, uh, ma- ma- uh, small stop motion one. Stop motion yeah, one. Yeah. They had the Nostromo, the full size model, the Nostromo, you know, and you just go in there and you're just like, oh my God, is that like the Spartan 300 shield yeah, on the yeah. wall? They're like, yeah. Well, oh. I mean, to talk, I, guess, I love um, that stuff. But I also love visual effects. It's just, yeah. uh, I think it's also studios with their insurance policies now, you know, and it's uh, the one downside about practical effects or in camera effects. And all you got to blow it up. Like it, it blow it up. Or it's a lot <laughs> of work. It's just a lot of work. It's a it lot is. of pre-planning. It's a lot of just... You know, and that and that's the downside of it. Yeah. It's the downside. I, I believe the the what was it like the base at the end of Inception? That wasn't a CG model. That was a practical. They blew that up in their parking mm-hmm, lot. Mm-hmm, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. DDA is not in. He's not in his head. Yes, that's. But he, here, here's the thing. Like, if we're giving the amount of time on pre-production now, because everybody wants uh, mm-hmm. UE five, which comes out on Tuesday officially. You know, it's a big release. Um, we're is, gonna that, have, is that going to be that's this Friday, Tuesday or t- Tuesday, Tuesday, on July 14th. Oh, yeah. Um, so we're going to have all these extra weeks to have these planning, right? The planning on the front of the pre-production, which we know they were shortened over mm-hmm. all these years because, mm-hmm. oh, we'll just fix it in post. Now it's gone back and we're going to get a, a much longer pre-production because, you know, the assets all have to be built prior. You know, you have to map it all out. So maybe we all get at the table. You know, and we can actually figure these things out right, and actually right. plan and have the time. Like you said, oh, it takes too much planning. Well, we're going to have that time. Right. So right. let me go in your day. How do you find balance in your life? Do you have balance in your life? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Don't well, you're a workaholic. I'm terrible in my social Don't life. Yeah. Um, because all I 
truly feel that I need to be doing all day is just the stuff that I want to get out of my system. And I have, I oil paint, I draw and charcoal, I do Photoshop designs, I sculpt, I do makeups, I do like all kinds of stuff. And I, there's not enough time in the day that I feel that I get all everything out and I get very depressed if I can't, if I'm at a party, like I never go to parties, but let's say I'm at a, mm -hmm. you know, gathering somewhere within 30 minutes, I like, I honestly feel almost guilty you know, like I got to be doing something now or, and that maybe stems from my childhood. It's very, very much embedded, you know, and that's not always good. No, no, it's not. I, when we were at stands together, you, you were working on that makeup. Um, I invited you to barbecue in my house and you mentioned to me, you know, I, I'll have time to rest when I'm dead. And you turned me down and didn't come to the barbecue because you wanted to <laughs> sculpt. And, right. and that actually left a mark on me. Right. And it made me reflect of like, am I pushing myself hard enough here? You were, I think, 19 yeah. or 20 here. And I was 30 something. Um, and here was this new artist coming in that we just met. And I'm like, he's putting the time in. He knows what it takes. I made a note myself that I need to push myself that hard. And I'm still learning it. Right. And, and right. I wake up days now that and it reflects from you that am i pushing myself hard enough right, right. And, and i give it to you because you showed me well thank you i wasn't aware but thank it, you. It, but yeah. that's those moments in life that we were talking right, about right. that tick off and you're like oh i know i could tell when i met you right. that you were going to be extremely successful right right i saw the passion i saw the dedication and i was like wow you, you know i was drawn to you Right. So, so you had it and that is amazing because it permeated from you. Mm -hmm. And what do you share with, with new people coming into you? Do you nurture new no, artists? Coming? Well, I very quickly notice if it's there or not. You uh, can see it. Oh, within, like what are, what are the telltale signs for odd. you? It's like, it's, it's, it's a personality thing, but yeah. it's also, um, and you probably deal with the same thing, mm -hmm. uh, having your own company. Uh, I don't know. You just, feel it and you can tell by the work obviously but it's little moments it's 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 how they do things or how to react to a certain question or um yeah. for me it's research like right. if they if if you're like oh you have to do like you know some sort of like bug creature or something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. and if they if they're just they if their 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 amount of reference isn't enough or they're not pulling from interesting sources like i can just tell you're just you're just not wanting to do it and right. you have to want to do it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And right. you can, you can, you can tell, you can tell by the questions they ask. You can tell. Yes. And I think in makeup, that will be the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can just quickly tell. And plus I, I, I don't really take on, I had a few interns, but you know, I'm not a school and it just, it ends up being very expensive. But has, has anyone reached out as you reached out to the other people about being interns at your studio? Uh, I've had portfolio send in stuff mm -hmm. and sometimes you get the exact same thing that the other student did as well. <laughs> you know, so what exactly did you do? Um, how old are you? 24? I'm like, I already did the pale man when I was your age. <laughs> uh, schools here work a little differently, yes, so that's yeah. fine. But, uh, and sometimes things kick in a little later. That's okay too. I recognize that. Uh, yeah. and not everybody has to have the crazy obsession that I had, you know, or have. Uh, but I need to recognize some things. And then when I go onto your Instagram and I see that you're horsing around six months later and you, st well, I didn't have the time to do a sculpture. I'm like, you sure did have a lot of time and you didn't do anything. I, I think that's probably one of the biggest things that we get asked and I get asked. They're like, how do I become a great artist? And once again, I've said this before, doodle on a napkin, on a piece of paper, consistently draw. Draw, yeah, I mean, draw. I go to these, sometimes I go to a talk at the school. I don't want to go because I'm always afraid I'm going to get ill. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> uh, so, and I know 90% of them that sit there are never going to do this anyway. So, uh, and I kind of feel bad for them because they spend a lot of money on these schools and then they just send them out with the idea like, oh, well, you're, you're it now. That's you're, hard. You've learned the ins and outs. You're ready. <laughs> yeah. and, I, I, I teach as well. And it, it it's hard. Because you can see, you can see when they have it and when they yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, you know that. But you yeah. want to give everybody ample time. But I get the question like, well, how do I do good skin tones? I'm like, well, stop partying around on Friday night and get to painting. And, and you know, it's it's interesting you're gonna say that when Alec was here, he said the exact same thing that he did not go out and party, and he was home sculpting, doing those other things. 
that made him, and once again, another Academy Award winner, mm -hmm. that he was doing the work. I can't emphasize enough to new artists. You got to do the work yep. in order to get it done. It doesn't do like on a Saturday afternoon, you do a half hour and you're like, I don't know why it's not happening. I, I You know, they just don't like me. I, I've heard that one. <laughs> yeah. I've heard that one. Yep. Yeah, they come in and they're like, you know, they don't like me at all. I, I, I think that's something. And it's like, no, it's a work ethic. Well, it's uh, especially now I've noticed, I don't know if you've noticed that, but that, like I deserve this after two days or a week. Again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I've got it with some artists, but like, I, yeah. you know, I, I should be supervising. I should be this. And I'm like, you, you yeah. literally yeah. just got out of school. That's what I mean. Like yeah. go somewhere, sponge, learn, take it all in. And, and once again, it's not a year. It's not two years. I mean, this year for me is 25 years I've been doing this. Yeah. It's just keep at it and 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 don't forget where you came from good things yeah. will happen yeah I, I mean going back to going back to the point where you were just asking me like i remember a time where i was in school and you know one of our instructors was like yeah on your linkedin page like you can't be like happy catman 48 like put your name or like be professional about these things and the response was well no i'm paying to go to school here so you you find me the work and like, I just remember everyone looking at this guy that made that statement and was mm -hmm. like, you're not going to last. Like that's, right, right, right. that's not how it works. That's not, never how it's worked in the art, you know, artist no, industry. No, this isn't no. like Harvard. Mm -hmm. It's, you still have, you have to be able to do the work. You have to. Well, and also, and even when you become successful, you probably know this too, uh, since you have, you have an amazing place. Oh, thank you. Um, we, you we're know, working no hard. matter how good your last job is, uh, or, you know, you're as good as you last. And then that's exactly you know, right. Yeah. Uh, you're there, you're gone. Oh my, yes, yeah. that, that is such a, I, I've worked on movies that have worked six months and done amazing work. And maybe that last shot. And then just you're didn't back work at Happy right. Catman, whatever that yeah. was. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Catman 69. <laughs> no, and, and I remember, um, you, you know, my last shot just didn't work out the right way. And that's all they remember you by. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. no, I did 50 shots in this movie and these yep. 49 yeah, are amazing. Yeah, yeah. That last shot is what they remember you, remember you by. So it, you always 100% all the way to the end, run as fast as you can to get to the finish line. Never take the foot off the gas. Yeah. It's Dude, so so, sometimes when I start new projects and stuff like that, like I have anxiety that I and that it pick, puts it off of for me starting it. Same here. Like, do you do you ever have, do you have advice? You know, like any kind of advice on getting through that? I know a lot of artists have that issue. Well, well. again, it's just that that step into the unknown a little bit, isn't yeah. it? It's it's yeah. What's the advice? Just do it, I guess. Yeah, because right. It's not always going to be a, the best no, piece. You're right. And I then mean, you just got to work harder on the next and, one. And and, and yeah, as I said, the failures, which I also yeah. have, uh, and and I wish I couldn't wouldn't have done that film or a certain film. Then you know, but well, we we're lucky enough to be in that kind of an industry where, you know, most of our fails we tr they're personal in nature. Right, right. Right. They're never from the job. You know, like. You could be really, you know, doing it. And the client was happy, but you felt you creatively mm -hmm. failed. Yes. Right? Yes. But that's the only, this is the only job in the world that I know where you fail upwards. Yes. Right? True. You know, like, so, you know, it, it's, and we grew up in, in certain ways where the word fail has just such major negative consequences where it shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Just because you failed at something doesn't mean, you know, you're not going to be great at something right away. Right. Right? Right. And if you are, that's not going to be fun for you in the long run anyways. If you're really good at something and it just comes naturally, there's no challenge in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. so yeah, I mean, that's kind of like true. what I've been thinking about. Yeah. There are no failures. Right. It's, it's the fail. knowledge you yeah. take forward yeah. with you. That's right. I mean, exactly. that, that's really what it is. So as we wrap up, um, what's one thing you do when you feel out of sync to get yourself back into what you feel is the right path if, if you feel honest because uh, i know you asked me some questions earlier what i wrote down but i think reflecting on the past mm -hmm. i do i tend to do that if i because nobody's asked me this question but um i never forget where i'm from anyway but um being grateful um um yeah looking back and see what I've done and been through and, and, and the hardships that come with it. Um, but, um, yeah, I think it will be that. 
it's, it's, it goes very deep, of course, that question, because it's true. It, it does. It, and I can kind of relate to that. I, I mean, of understanding, I come from blue collar back, background, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and you just realize that that you when you look back and you reflect that, well, I, I, I can work harder. It, it gives you that motivation to get you over. Right. Because you're like, no, no, I, I, I can do it. I, I, st I stick with I, I can make them proud. Right. So right. I'm, I'm going to push forward. So, no, I think that that makes complete sense that you're reflecting back to go, OK, yeah, I can get through it. Yeah. And plus, I see the studio now. I, I sit sometimes and I, I just kind of look around and it's this big place and with all this stuff and, and all the stuff from Ghostbusters is now in it. And I'm like, gosh, I had a tour tour. <laughs> yes, you're welcome to come tour. Um <laughs> I had a proton pack when I was nine out of a made of an old shoe box painted black. You know, how cool is this? That's, so that's amazing that, you know, if you're not like, don't let go those passions, don't those memories, then you should be okay. Every empty paper towel roll was a lightsaber. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> see, you know, and, and, you know, you, you're mentioning that it's, um, I, I, I've talked about this before is that seed that's planted is you let it grow that, that little box that you built was that seed that pushed you forward and you nurtured it and you let it grow. You never let it die. Right, right. Well, it was probably also an escape out of a life that, yeah. you know. Which, is, hey, you know, what's that's what it was for me. Go, going to the, just going to the, the act of going to the movie theaters and sitting in there and wa and just like turning off the world and going and seeing a movie is my one of my all-time favorite things and right, I don't think it'll right. ever change. Right. I'll be, if the theaters ever go away, I will, I'll have, I'll, I'll cry a little, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, they're not going away. They're not going I hope they're not, not going I hope away. Not. No, I, they're not going I just thought this weekend I had the urge to go. I was like, I'll take my daughter to go see a movie. I, I was like all excited. I was like, I oh, can't I do can't, that right now. <laughs> I can't do that right now. <laughs> Unfortunately. So, um, as we wrap up, yeah. we're going to have you back. Absolutely. I would be we're going to, to because we're going to deep Proton dive. Proton pack and all. Uh, yeah. You, do you have you? one? <laughs> no, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to dress up. I want you to dress up. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thank you from the bottom of my heart to come and be on the show. Um, it's amazing to see your journey because well, I did you. get to see you when you started out. You did. I know. So I'm, I'm honestly genuinely honored. So thank well, you for coming thank today. You. I'm honored thank to you be for here. being here, man. Thanks we appreciate it. Me. And we're out. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank thanks. You.